They say football is a sport of inches. By that metric, mixed martial arts is a sport of millimeters. The tiniest margins of error imaginable are what can make the difference between a dominant victory and an embarrassing defeat. No fighter in MMA today knows that more than the former UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesanya. Any fighter who has gone 0-3 against his rival might want to consider moving on to other opponents, but in the case of the last stylebender and Alex Pereira, things get a little strange. This pairing joins the likes of Alexander Volkanovsky vs. Max Holloway, Frankie Edgar vs. BJ Penn, as well as boxing's Tyson Fury vs. Deontay Wilder as examples of trilogies that have seen one of its participants left without a single victory. A look at any of these three scenarios will be enough to understand how much of a sink or swim fight this is for Adesanya. Three losses to Edgar were enough to effectively end BJ Penn's time as a UFC elite, and though it's too early to know for sure, Max Holloway isn't getting a fourth fight with Volkanovski anytime soon. Sometimes the details get lost when the numbers are so severely stacked in one fighter's favor. Even Robert Whitaker is having a tough time being mentioned in title discussions despite only going a narrow 0-2 against Izzy. However, Pereira and Adesanya's back and forth isn't just strange because it took place across two different combat sports. No, what really sets this one apart is the fact that fight by fight, you could easily make the argument that Israel Adesanya got the better of Poetan in every fight up until, well, he didn't. This wasn't Wilder getting schooled by Fury aside from a few big punches, or Holloway slowly falling far behind Volkanovski over three highly entertaining bouts. There was nothing drawn out about Pereira's dominance in this rivalry, but given his skill set, he doesn't need to be anything beyond who he is. You can look as good as you like for 24 minutes of a fight, but as Israel has learned, all that good work can vanish in an instant. That first matchup in the kickboxing ring was a tightly contested decision that went Pereira's way. A fair result, but one that you could see as easy to score in Izzy's favor. The second fight was a far more convincing performance from Adesanya, or at least it was up until Pereira found his most famous highlight reel moment to date. And when it came to their first fight in mixed martial arts, a seemingly fired up Adesanya looked like he was about to make one hell of a statement. He didn't even place a major emphasis on the newer elements of his MMA skill set to stifle Pereira, instead preferring a largely kickboxing-based approach. But the past has a funny way of repeating itself, and despite all of his good work, Pereira found his stride in the fifth, bringing Stylebender's long title reign to a close. The whole idea of setting two elite fighters to work in a ring, cage, or octagon is to try and get as close as you can to a concrete idea of who, of the two, is the better fighter. Sometimes you get a wild result, a lucky punch or a finish that comes totally against the grain. But when it comes to Pereira versus Adesanya, things get a little murkier. Poetan has been able to win by doing the thing that he does best, finding his mark right as Adesanya was in the middle of doing the exact thing that he does best. So in essence, does that mean that Pereira is definitively the best fighter because of his ability to impose himself on each contest to find the pathway to his own route to victory? Well, that may just depend on your own takeaways from these three fights. But what isn't up for debate here is that Pereira is 3-0 over the last stylebender, and as of right now, Adesanya had only escaped being finished by his great rival once. How often do you see a trilogy of fights where the loser has been so reliably dominant? It's as if it doesn't matter how impressive Israel looks, because even on the final stretch of his race, his Brazilian adversary was always in it, always ready to deliver a knockout of nuclear proportions. We all know that Pereira is quite proud of his indigenous heritage. In fact, his nickname Poetan was drawn directly from the aboriginal Tupi people of Brazil, meaning hands of stone in their language. You've all no doubt seen Pereira's efforts to promote his background, taking to the stage for UFC weigh-ins fully decked out in the traditional garb of his ancestors. Now, 
We're not exactly saying that Alex has been able to tap into any shamanism of tribes similar to his, or that he has somehow found a direct channel to Haitian voodooism or even West African Vodun. But for Israel Adesanya, no matter how fearless or confident he is in his own skill set, how can you not be somewhat affected by the sight of your next challenger as he takes to the ceremonial scales, decked out with the traditional garb of his people, feathers from his head, face paint? Again, we're not saying that Pereira is winning these fights by any method other than his natural finishing instinct and insane power, but even though you can ground his successes in logic, Pereira's own confidence must be affected by his successes. And whatever he chooses to believe as the reasoning behind this being the case, it's clearly working. It's not like Adesanya is lacking in confidence or anything, but when you're 0-3 after a series of fights that you've largely dominated, how confident can you really be? Does Izzy mess with his formula and risk leaving himself more at risk in the face of Pereira's power? Or does he stick to his guns and assume that lightning won't strike again? You can get all into the debates you like over who the better fighter is, over who of the two would have the greatest level of success in bouts with guys like Robert Whitaker, Marvin Vittori, Kamzat Shemaev, and more. But when push comes to shove, Alex Pereira knows how to beat Israel Adesanya, and even a total switch-up of the rule set, glove size, and arena of combat doesn't change that fact. So, what can Israel Adesanya do in the face of such a great track record? Well, it goes without saying that the mental game is going to play a major role. Again, Adesanya is a very confident dude, and with good reason. But this time around, any level of fighting outside of his game plan is going to have to be left to one side. Izzy can't go out there and be flashy. He can't try to make a point against Pereira. No, this fight is going to have to be fought with a surgical level of precision. If Adesanya has to point fight in the most boring contest of 2023, that's exactly what he needs to do. The worry, coming from a lot of Adesanya fans, is that Izzy's confidence and general desire to radiate a certain level of swagger that this will bring him to a point where he doesn't just want to beat Alex Pereira. If his pursuit of revenge leads Izzy to attempt to try and embarrass Pereira in there, that sounds like a surefire recipe for a fourth consecutive Poetown victory. You gotta understand just how unique and complicated a situation this is for Adesanya. Even with his 0-3 record in mind, Israel has every right to believe himself to be the superior fighter, the superior striker, an all-round martial artist. And in his own mind, he could explain away each loss he suffered pretty easily because, in reality, he would have a solid point. What's worrying about a matchup like this is that a guy like Pereira could fight Adesanya ten times and score ten brutal knockouts, but never win a single round. That may sound a little extreme, but you surely get what I mean. He just has a special X-factor that you can certainly prepare for, but it's damn near impossible to be confident against. His left hook in particular might be the single greatest weapon in MMA today. And just because you get caught with it doesn't mean that you had an off night. Poetan is just that dangerous. And that's where the problem lies for Israel Adesanya. His coaches should be confident in his ability to follow and execute any game plan they make for him to a T. But when the power levels coming back at you are this high, it's a really tough fight to plan for. And even a near-perfect performance might not be enough. So what would a piece of general advice for Israel look like? Well, let's not forget that Israel had Alex in some real danger early on, and it was only the ending of the round that saved him from a potential TKO. That kind of statement victory would have totally changed the narrative here, and it's important to remember that Adesanya is capable of delivering one. If he has the power to stun him that badly, it goes without saying that he has the power to finish him. And in a situation where Pereira has already shown himself to be capable of retaining his power into the final round, could pursuing a quick finish be the smartest option? But there's also a danger of Israel focusing too heavily on that moment and what could have happened, something that could really leave him open to danger. He has to respect Pereira at this point. He needs to be certain of the danger that lies before him. It doesn't matter how good he thinks he is, Pereira is the one with the track record. 
This is not some bum getting an early title shot in a new sport anymore. No, this is the middleweight champion of the world, and he very clearly appears to have your number. Perhaps wrestling could play a role. Let's also not forget that Izzy had major success in round three of their first MMA fight, exposing holes in Poetan's skill set that negated the Brazilian's clear physical advantage. That top pressure he applied to Pereira clearly exhausted him coming into round four, and if Stylebender learned anything from his unsuccessful pursuit of Jan Blachowicz's 205-pound belt, it's that rounds like that can win world titles. The pressure is really on Anasanya here. He's the more seasoned MMA fighter, the guy who everyone knows as one of the pound-for-pound -pound best of his era. If this rivalry was a movie, the script would dictate that Izzy recovers from these constant setbacks and finds his way to his redemption, defeating his great rival in a performance that sees him answer all of the questions while eluding Pereira's most dangerous weapons. But this ain't a movie, folks, and fighting does not work like that. To quote the words of Deontay Wilder, to win here, Izzy needs to be perfect for every minute of this fight while his opponent needs to be perfect for just one split second. When you spell it out like that, it sure does sound bleak, right? Well, even at 0-3, what makes this rivalry so compelling is that Israel Adesanya is the superior kickboxer, the superior mixed martial artist. But the fact that technically being better just hasn't been enough must be playing on his mind to at least some extent. Only time will tell how he manages to navigate that inside the UFC octagon. But what do you make of this riveting fourth showdown between the reigning middleweight champion Alex Pereira and the man he has triumphed over three times already, Israel Adesanya?